It's Saturday, October 8, and I'm in the garage. Dom husked all my walnuts, but now I have to clean them. It's an extremely messy task. I do not have any power tools. Most people use like cement mixer type tools. I'm just using a fancy little brush to get them all clean. So that's why I thought I'd show this video because if you're a woman like me, you're probably not gonna have access to hand tools, right? Big power tools like a man, unless you're that way inclined. So the first thing I wanna do is the float test. Anything that floats is not viable. You get rid of it. Gloves are essential because it's discoloring. Uh, I've created another video on this. I'll link it in the description box below. The liquid can be used to dye your hair. It can also be used to stain wood. The nut's pretty clean. And what am I using? This is a bottle brush. It's really long and I've folded it over and I've elasticized it. It's a really hard bristle. So, you know, nothing fancy. very tedious process so I'm not gonna time-lapse it I thought about it <laughs> I won't make you suffer that instead I'll let you watch the pigeons today this was a good idea but because it's nylon the little bristles are falling out so not the best idea I have a steel what do you call it steel wool brush I'm gonna use that I was also thinking one of those steel scrubber things. The only problem is, because you wear gloves, you don't want to get holes in them, otherwise the, the stain will leach into them. So it's going to take me a whole lot longer, but this seems to be the better route. So as you can see, you get a really nice, clean nut, which is what I want. You know, it's at times like this where I have a tremendous appreciation for the squirrels and the amount of work that they do to prepare their food. And to think, 75% of the nuts that they bury, they don't remember where they put them. Like, that's a lot of lost labor, right? At least I get to reap the benefits of all of my work. I found a larger steel wool brush, just so you can see. That's how well it cleans the nut. It does a really good job. Like I said, it's time consuming, but it's well worth it. Definitely not something if you're the, you know, the kind of person that you need to do things really fast. Then this method is not for you. The key to using a steel wool brush with a walnut is not to scrape it back towards you, otherwise you get back spray. Always push it forward against the bucket so that you get all the crap along the inside of the bucket. And that's what I've done so far. And there's still more in the bottom of this bucket. I'm not done, but unfortunately my hands are. So all those nuts took me four hours to do. That's why my hands are sore. <laughs> I can see why men use power tools, and I think moving forward, I'm going to have to do something different, especially if I want to do more batches because I can barely move my hands. Not good, because I still have canning to do <laughs> and other work. There's got to be a better way. As a woman, right? Men, you do your thing, but women, we do our thing, and we do it differently, so I might have to adapt and become more like a man that way. So I'm just going to do the rest for me. So out of the two five gallon bushel baskets that I collected, this is the finished product. Now they need to cure for six months to a year before I crack them open. And the reason for that is because if you crack them prior, the shell's not quite dry enough or hard enough to crack properly. So you definitely want to give it that ample time. And really anything beyond a year is even better. Once your nuts are fully dried, you can transfer them to a breathable container, whether that's like a potato sack or an onion bag or a cloth bag that you have, or even some people have like metal mesh bags, or even like a nylon mesh bag is fine. And then just leave them. And your nuts will essentially last so long as they're in the shell, almost indefinitely. It's once you crack them open, especially in warmer temperatures, before the fats begin to turn rancid. So if you're not going to use them right away, and if you are going to crack them after about six months to a year, you will definitely want to refrigerate or freeze them in some sort of Ziploc bag or plastic container. These are black walnuts that I gathered from 2020. They cured six months, 
just in the open and then I jarred them. And I want to crack it so you can see what the craze is all about. I'm used to cracking walnuts with a walnut cracker, but apparently these are too hard. So yep, they're definitely too hard. Well, I wanted to try it first. I have this old meat cleaver that I got from the thrift store and the hammer doesn't work because it's not sharp enough, but this does. So it's really simple. Just please be careful. Your fingers are there, right? I think the idea is I need something that I can just voila like that. And then you can see the meat is right in there. Probably your surface should be concrete uh, that you're hammering onto. I'm just up in the kitchen and I just wanted to give you a quick little overview of what it's like to crack these nuts. Let me clean up. Probably a meat hook would be best. I don't have one. I have a half of an old scissor. So I'm just going to try and pry this out. I think there's a bit of a conspiracy happening in my house that whenever I go to create a video, either Gypsy starts or Dom starts. <laughs> so many interruptions later, cut and edit, I'm back. The meat is incredibly pungent. It's not like your store-bought. It might, for some people, be an acquired taste. It's a very strong taste, but it's nice. You know, upon eating this a few times and really discerning the taste, to me, the taste is akin to the smell of the black liquid after you've husked the walnut and hosed it down with the water kind of has that taste, which tells me that even after, what, this is three years that it's been curing, it still has a very rich tannin flavor. So if you have tannin sensitivities, my recommendation is this. After you have cured your nuts and after you have taken the meat away from the nut, let the meat rest for approximately maybe two to four weeks and maybe for some of you two to four months before you even begin to consume this, especially the higher sensitivity to tannins that you have. And in fact, I think the higher sensitivity you have to tannins, you might even want to soak this meat and dry it before you eat it, after you've taken it out from the shell. Now, I showed you what it took to crack this open. Once again, I have an even greater appreciation for squirrels. In fact, do you know that unless a squirrel is constantly cracking nuts, its teeth just grow and grow and grow? And part of keeping their teeth short is by cleaning nuts and cracking them with their teeth. Kind of interesting, right? It's like cats and their claws. If they don't scratch on a tree or something like a scratching post, well, even with scratching posts that we typically use, which are just carpet, the nails get really sharp, but they don't stay short. When they're out and they're digging their claws into wood, it keeps them at a reasonable length. Otherwise, like you and I, their nails would just grow and grow and grow. Interesting, right? But squirrels, yeah. I'm not gonna crack these open anytime soon because I don't plan on using them. But when I do, these will definitely, the meat will go into the freezer in a Ziploc bag. But for now, that's today's video. Hope you enjoyed it. And until I see you in a future video, thanks for watching. I'll see you real soon. Ciao.